Major funding for Immortality Now was provided through an educational grant from Hotsi Vitamins. Founded in 1993 by Dr. Stephen F. Hotsi, Hotsi Vitamins is committed to delivering only the finest quality vitamins and supplements to meet your patient's needs. Now offering customized vitamin packs, Hotsi Vitamins is making it easier than ever for your patients to get well naturally. For more information, visit client.hotsivitamins.com. Hi, this is Dr. Ron Klotz. We're here at the 23rd International Congress on Anti-Aging Medicine in Hollywood, Florida, and it's my pleasure to have Dr. Amen, Dr. Daniel Amen, as our uh, guest today. Dr. Amen is a noted psychiatrist, a neuroscientist, a best-selling author, PBS specials, TED Talks, uh, university research. This is going to be one of the best editions of Immortality Now that we've done, I am certain. Now, what I really liked about your presentation today was about the, uh, the concept of being the brain warrior. It's very important. You know, it's really brain first as far as I'm concerned with regard to anti-aging medicine. It's the decisions that you make, which are a brain function, that determine how long you live. Right. And there's this great, I talked about it today, uh, longevity study um, that they did over 90 years looking at what goes That was success. fantastic. Yeah, please review that. That was great material uh, and a surprise, a big surprise. So you ready for a big surprise? Here you go. So Lewis Terman, a psychologist at Sanford, um, looked at 1,548 10-year-old children in 1921, and then he and other researchers followed them for the next 90 years, looking at what goes with success, health, and longevity. And it was a big surprise, because it wasn't happiness, it wasn't a lack of worry. In fact, the don't worry, be happy people died the earliest from accidents and preventable illnesses. Um, it was the people who are conscientious, people who showed up when they said they would show up, and the people who work the hardest who had a sense of passion and purpose. And those are good brain function things. So if you really want to live a long time, you gotta work on optimizing <clears throat> the physical functioning of your brain. And a little anxiety is good for you. Right? I thought as a psychiatrist, my job was to lower people's anxiety. I had Xanax, I had biofeedback, <laughs> I had hypnosis, deep relaxation. And then it hit me about 25 years ago when I started looking at the brain. My job isn't to lower your anxiety. In fact, for a lot of people, it's to raise their anxiety so they'll do the right thing. But that's what gets us to, to a long life. It's passion and purpose. And then you have to be careful with the sugar. Uh, because yeah, sugar and sugar simple carbohydrates, they're just death to the brain. Well, let's, let's back up for a second. Let's talk about brain aging because you are a pioneer in brain aging. Dr. Amen did amazing work in imaging the brain in a very functional way, an understandable way, you know, because, you know, there's, there's, there's laboratory research, which for most people, unless you're a PhD specialist with, you know, two postdoc fellowships, you don't get it. But then there's a way of, of, of synthesizing that information so that people do get it. And one of the brilliant things you did was to use a spec scanner to image the brain and to show uh, brain function and to show brain deficit and how these things could be modified, how it wasn't like a, a forever and always situation, how it wasn't a death sentence for your brain, how the brain could actually be resuscitated. And maybe you could talk about that for a moment because so, I think that's what led to so much of what we're talking about today. Right. 25 years ago, I went to my first lecture on brain spec <clears throat> imaging, and it revolutionized my life because I'm a classically trained psychiatrist. We're not trained to look at the brain or really think in brain system pathology. I went to that lecture. I got completely hooked. Uh, it's like, well, I'm a psychiatrist. I'm a medical doctor. I should be looking at people's brains. And it surprised me because I thought, you know, I'd see ADHD, anxiety, depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia. Oh, I can see the brain pattern for them. That means I have to give medication. But then I would see the medication would actually have a negative effect on brain function. And that actually got me thinking about natural ways to heal and optimize the brain. And so I was, I trained when Xanax came onto the market. And so I had my patients on Xanax. And when I looked at their scans, they looked like they were all alcoholics. I mean, it looked awful. So I'm like, I'm pulling them off their medications. You've got to have 
uh, something to do. And so that's where I got really interested in using natural supplements as a way to optimize brain function. First, do no harm. But the other thing, I scanned my own brain, and I didn't like it. It looked older than I was, and that horrified me. So I developed the program we have to get it bigger, fatter. Because did you know 50% of people, 85, will be diagnosed with Alzheimer's or another form of dementia? Yes. So if you're fortunate enough I thought to it was live, higher than 50%. 50%. But what that means is half of the people who make it that long will have brains ravaged by disease, but you don't have to. So over the next 25 years, we built a database of 110,000 scans on people from 111 countries. And the big lesson, you are not stuck with what you have. You can make it better. I can prove it. And we did the big NFL study that showed, yes, they have brain damage, but many of them could be rehabilitated. I mean, that's like, that's, nobody knows that. No, right. no, the, that, all the that's news huge. about the NFL stuff is negative, suicide, right. dementia, uh, domestic violence. But I had these 170 players, and I, I would have hated to say, oh, you have brain damage, I'm sorry, bye. Um, so we put them on a rehabilitation program. So diet, exercise, weight loss if they needed it. And then a multiple mechanism supplement. And that's, so supplements have a bad rap because like medicine, they often have a single mechanism action. And so we went after them with blood flow, inflammation, nutrient vitamin support, acetylcholine neurotransmitter support, uh, increase in the fluidity of nerve cell membranes. 80% of our players showed improvement. Really? And mood, memory, attention, sleep, and blood flow to their frontal lobes. Wow. Now, why does frontal lobe blood flow matter? Focus, forethought, judgment, impulse control, organization, planning, forethought, empathy. Goodness, I was like so excited. You are not stuck with the brain you have, but you have to do it in multiple mechanisms, optimizing their important numbers. It's one of the things I love about A4M. It's not, are you normal? It's like, are you optimal? That's really what we're going after. That's what it's all about. Personalized and iterative. We go after it over time, and that's the message of my life. You're not stuck with the brain you have. I can make it better. We can make it better, and I can prove it. So I just evaluated an executive team. We have a cool program called Change Your Brain, Change Your Business. And the CEO had a father with Alzheimer's disease. And he's like, well, I don't want to get it. And so we scanned him. His brain looked terrible. He's on his way. And he's drinking way too much. And he's not sleeping. So as I got him better, he's like, well, I want my executive team to be better. Because if their brains are better, we'll do better business because mm -hmm. it's ultimately your brain that makes the decisions, of that course. follows through, that takes care of your customers. And four of them clearly, not very symptomatic, but had brains ravaged by disease. Mm -hmm. So I, I showed a video today. Uh, it's one of my favorite videos. These two women are on a railroad bridge 80 feet high in the air, and they can't get off, and a train is coming. And the train runs them over, and ultimately they didn't die because they laid down flat. But what the scans are for me is if you knew a train was going to hit you, would you get out of the way? And GE actually did a study that said 75% of people would want to know if brain problems were coming, even if they couldn't do anything about it. But what you and I both know is you can do something about it. You can do something about it. That's really the important thing. And that's really what immortality now is all about. And that's why we have these discussions, because we want to be able to uh, give information, useful, actionable information for people how to avoid these sort of things. I know you're an expert on the prevention aspect of it. So when it comes to the prevention of deterioration of brain function, to, deter to, to risk for Alzheimer's or neurodegenerative disease or dementia, what are the things, what are the three top things that people should be thinking about? Besides exercise and diet, of course, because every, everybody talks about exercise and diet. Do you, do you ever see the movie City Slickers? Yeah. With Billy Crystal sure. and Jack Palance. Uh -huh. And there's this, um, Billy Crystal's having a moment, you, you know. He's having a midlife crisis. So he goes in to this cowboy ranch. And Jack Palance is the old crusty cowboy, Curly. And Curly says to Billy Crystal's character, Mitch, is you have to know the one thing. And... Mitch is going, what's the one thing? And then the next scene, Curly dies. And so he's like, I don't know the one thing. <laughs> well, I know the one thing. And that is when you do the right thing. Stop feeling deprived. When you do the right thing, 
praise yourself for it. So many people, they eat right, they exercise, and they're like, oh, no, I really want the pizza, I really want the pasta, I really want the ice cream. I, and they don't have the right mindset. So if you want immortality now, you got to change your thinking. That mm -hmm. when you have to be a warrior, I mean, that's the whole brain warrior concept, is you're in a war for the health of your brain. And the, the world is against you. you got to make the right decisions. Second thing, get your mind right, you got to get your blood sugar right. If your blood sugar is high, not only does it lead to diabetes, high normal blood sugar is associated with brain atrophy. Really? High normal blood pressure is associated with brain atrophy. And there are 200 studies now, I published two of them, that say as your weight goes up, the actual physical size and function of your brain goes down. Now, when I read that first study from the University of Pittsburgh, I lost 30 pounds. I'm never going to purposefully <laughs> do something to hurt myself. I had tried in so many different ways from sugar busters and Atkins and um, like, no, what? now I'm serious because I had the right motivation. Motivation is everything. It's everything. Let's talk about sleep. Now, during your lecture, you mentioned the importance of of quality sleep and the explosion of psychotropic drugs and all kinds of other things that can interfere with sleep and, and even impaired sleep leads to a shrinkage of the brain. Right. Just within the last year there's new research that shows what happens when you sleep. Your brain actually cleans itself, it washes itself, it takes out the toxins so the channels, the cleaning channels actually don't work when you're awake, they only work when you're asleep. So if you're not getting good sleep, beta amyloid plaques build up and other toxins that are we know responsible or at least involved in Alzheimer's disease. The other thing is sleep apnea treated. It's just an epidemic in our country. So making sure it's diagnosed, if you snore loudly, stop breathing, chronically tired, you've got to go to a sleep lab. And, and if the sleep doctor says you have sleep apnea, you can't wear the mask for like three days and then blow it off, right? right? And one of the best ways to treat sleep apnea is weight loss, but if you don't treat the sleep apnea, you don't have the energy or the cognitive ability uh, to control it. For me, I found I love using hypnosis to help people sleep. We actually make uh, hypnosis uh, sleep audio, and I was in the, my clinic and in the waiting room, and a woman came up to me and she said, I just love going to bed with you. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, but I've had that many times. Uh -huh. uh, obviously, I'm at home. But uh, it just, it trains people to calm and quiet their own minds. The problems are people have their phones next to their head. Uh, they have lights on all over the room. The room is too warm. It's too light. So uh, people do better in cool rooms with, you know, blackout shades, not anything that'll distract them. Uh, it, is, it is just critical. Because if you get less than six hours of sleep at night, you have lower blood flow to the front part of your brain. So what does that mean? More bad decisions. And so I know, because I get in really late last night, that if I don't really focus on getting enough sleep, I'm more vulnerable to losing the war, you know, whether it's you know the fast food companies or whatever. So I actually do, I try not to plan my travel uh, before 11 o'clock in the morning so that I always get good sleep. With regard to uh, technology, there are devices that are coming out on the market for the uh, practicing physician, for the, the primary care physician, that are uh, simplified EEG machines uh, that are 3D brain mapping uh, EEG technologies. Have you had any experience with these? Is or are there other technologies that you endorse other than the spec scanning? Um, I really like quantitative EEG, and we also do quantitative EEG at our six clinics. And um, s some of the simple devices they can give you simple uh, information, which I think for the general public is great. Uh, for more complicated people, SPAC quantitative EEG can be really powerful. There's a new study, though. You've got to be careful with it. There, there are people playing with direct current uh, to the brain, and they found that actually does more harm than good. So you have to be careful. If you have depression and we use something called transcranial magnetic stimulation, mm -hmm. really helpful. What about the list stimulator? The, uh, it's an AC-10 unit for cranial stimulation. It's been around for a long time. 
So it's called CES, cranial electric stimulation, where they right. put it on your Not on the ears. They actually the have ear. electrodes across the... Right. Fisher-Wallace has one. It, it is the Fisher-Wallace device. And there's It was studies. developed by, by LIS back in 1985. It started in Russia, and mm -hmm. there are studies showing it's helpful for sleep, for pain, for anxiety, and depression. What has been your experience with use of uh, testosterone, human growth hormone, or other uh, other nootropic agents in improving or, or, or repairing uh, age-related brain dysfunction? You know, I, I'm a huge fan of bioidentical hormone replacement with this caveat. A lot of the people I see, their testosterones are too high. And what happens when your testosterone is too high? You're too much of a guy. Mm -hmm. Your empathy goes down, right. and your libido goes up, and that's a disastrous combination mm -hmm. because you end up having an affair, getting divorced, losing half your net worth, visiting your children <laughs> on the weekends. So I like optimal, which would be in the higher range of normal, but don't overshoot it because mm -hmm. then you're shooting yourself in the foot. I agree with you entirely. Thank you so much. What a pleasure. Live long and well. God bless you. Dr. Amy, you're doing really great work. Thank you. Immortality Now is made possible in part by Hoetze Vitamins, now offering customized vitamin packs. For more information, visit clients.hoetzevitamins.com.